I installed a 100 inch TV in our master bedroom. This is the Hisense 100 inch PL1 laser TV. And yes, it really is 100 inches in diagonal. There are a few different components that went into this project, and I'm going to break those down for you in this video, including this custom cabinet that I designed and built and this electronic sliding tray from Nexigo that makes the magic happen when you turn the TV on. So when we're laying on our bed, our heads are 22 feet away from the TV. That is an 82 inch TV on the wall there. The TV that we currently had in our master bedroom was this 85 inch Samsung Q950 TS 8K television that we've absolutely loved, but it had a huge problem. It has a major glare and it just wasn't big enough. Now, full disclosure, Hisense did send me out this brand new PL1 ultra short throw projector for me to review for you guys, but they did not pay me to do this review. So I'm going to tell you exactly what I think of the PL1 and if this ultra short throw laser TV is right for you. Next, we needed to get that 85 inch Samsung off the wall. These screens are big and heavy when they're a TV like this, all the components inside. We did manage to get off the wall, but that was difficult. Next, on to assembling the Hisense Cine 100A frame and screen. This is an ALR screen, so it will reject the light, the ambient light in the room and it went together pretty easily. We just went around and connected up the frame itself, put in the support braces. There were a lot of screws that we put in this. So having two people certainly made much shorter work of putting this frame together. Then we got that out of the way so that we could then proceed to put the screen down on the floor. It is a must to put these gloves on that they included with the projector and we rolled out that screen. And when you roll it out, you're rolling it out face down on the protective material. And then you put that frame on top of the back of the screen material itself and then go around systematically putting these little springs into the grommets with the included U-shaped hook you simply just pull them and then they snap right into place there. And you do want to follow the instructions on how to put this together because you want to make sure that that screen is perfectly flat and nice and tight all the way around. Once you have that done, you're going to put the outer frame on the screen itself and get those all lined up. This is not only going to provide a little bit of a decorative edge, but it's going to protect that ALR screen so that you don't get all your fingerprints and oil on it. I then had to do a little bit of drywall patching work because I had to move the thermostat over to the left and I had to move an entire light switch into the bathroom just to make this thing fit, but it's so worth it. I then moved on to measuring out where the screen was gonna go in relationship to how high the projector was gonna sit below it. They included this really nice big template that I was able to tape right onto the wall and they actually provided measurements for you specifically for this template. Once I found the studs in the wall behind the template, I marked them on the template itself, which I then proceeded to use a drill and screw some initial pilot holes to be able to anchor the brackets that will hold the screen up on the wall to the wall. These brackets are really creative and ingenious because they allow you to adjust the, not only the height, but also the level of the screen after you have them properly mounted. So after they were securely mounted on the wall, I put these rods together. There's little tiny screws that you gotta put in these rods. And I spent way too long doing this. Maybe it's cause I got big hands or maybe I was tired that night. I don't know what it was, but these rods really frustrated me. But once I did get them together and get them hooked into the bracket, then I was ready to get that screen put up there. These hang down below the screen so that you can adjust the height of those brackets even with the screen on the wall, which made it super easy to level the screen out because once the screen was on the wall, I could then screw those rods and level it out perfectly. Once they were all level, I could just tuck them up underneath and we were good to go. Okay, finally, let's unbox this PL1. So inside you're gonna find everything that you need, including this remote, which is somewhat basic, but it gets the job done and it works well. So I'm not gonna complain about it, but it is a pretty standard plastic remote. The PL1 itself, I was much more impressed with the finishing material on it, the colors they chose, the front material. It just looks like a beautiful piece of technology maybe even just a cool speaker, but not some bulky, ugly projector. So I was very impressed with that. On the back, you've got two HDMI ports. One of them is an ER port. You've got a network port and an optical cable along with a USB type A port. Now, don't laugh at me, but I didn't have any furniture. I didn't have anything to put below this screen that I was going to set this 
ultra short throw projector on. So I just decided to use the Hisense boxes and the foam and styrofoam that they included in. I was able to kind of get it to a suitable height that they wanted. In fact, the dimensions are inside the manual, so you can follow those specifically. But I had to kind of mess with this a couple of times, just trying out different heights to see what would work. And I finally did get it to a certain height that got the picture almost close to it. But it did give me an idea of something that I wanted to make to make it perfect every single time, which I'll show you in just a little bit. But here I am calibrating the screen. You got to get it kind of within those boundaries initially. And once you get it there, then you can let the automatic geometric correction take over and do the rest for you. I don't mind the little banding you see there. That's just the frame rate on the camera. You don't see that actually, but there is a cool focusing option in there so you can really dial in the focus. And then I finalized all of my setup. The PL1 is Google certified and has Google TV built right into it. And then I was finally able to see what the picture was going to look like on this 4k pl1 ultra short throw projector and wow i was impressed i'm not gonna lie and say you're gonna see the same quality on this youtube video but the detail was amazing now again if you see any banding you don't see that that's just the camera with the frame rate here i'm showing you different lighting conditions with this anti-light rejecting screen and this is with some lights overhead directly on it still can see the picture nice and vibrant if you turn those overhead lights, just some ambient lights around the room, still seeing it very nicely, a little bit more saturation, black levels a little bit blacker in this case. And this is typically how we would be watching TV at night in this room. We would have lights on in the room. We wouldn't have those direct overhead lights on anyway. So this is gonna be extremely viewable even with lights on. And of course, if we turn the lights off completely in the room, it's very much cinematic and theater-like, but we do have a whole home theater inside of a shed. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link that below because this is really for our daytime and evening viewing when we don't wanna go out to the dedicated theater inside of a shed. So I'm impressed so far with the colors I'm seeing. Don't look at anybody else, don't worry about anybody else, and make sure you get to that line. The multi-dimensional spatial sound Dolby Atmos speaker system in this did really impress me and the Dolby Vision that is built into this also really surprised me, especially in these darker settings. So while the Dolby Vision was cool and gave a lot of contrast, I was a little disappointed in the fact that it did reduce the overall brightness level when you turn the Dolby Vision on, but the colors were very stunning. And this is to give you an idea of what it looks like now when we sit in our bed looking at the 100 inch TV screen that is 22 feet away from our heads. It does make a big difference. Now I just needed to come up with a better solution for the PL1 to sit on. So I started sketching up some different designs in SketchUp as to what I thought I wanted. I really had this idea of a floating shelf that would house a projector and include an electronic automated slider that would slide out the projector to the precise distance that it needed to be at when I turned on the TV. Once I got my wife's approval on the look and design of it, my niece and I did a happy dance and I got to work building it. I had never built cabinets or furniture for that matter, so this was all new to me. I did just use some very inexpensive boards that I picked up from Lowe's to do this. I'm sure there's much better, higher grade pieces of wood I could have used, but I just got to work in cutting it. I figured if I screwed it up really bad, I could always just remake it out of better wood and spend more time. I used my pocket hole drill to drill the holes on each of the securing sides. This is going to make sure that everything is nice and square, and I'll do a combination of wood glue and pocket hole screws to get this all secured together. I did lay down a good bead of wood glue before I screwed it in with the pocket hole screws. I also use these clamps just to make sure everything is perfectly squared up and aligned before screwing because when you use pocket hole screws, they tend to slide a little bit. So using clamps like this really helps you keep it in the precise position when you go to screw those into the wood. I found myself constantly checking the dimensions and measurements because I kept second guessing myself, even though I did it all in SketchUp and everything was precisely to size. When I cut these pieces of wood down, they are slightly off in some of their measurements. So I just checked the squareness on everything because I wanted to make sure that this thing looked level and perfect when it was on the wall. I did a little bit of storage and cabinet space on either side of where the Hisense PL projector was going to go and this also helped to really square up these vertical pieces before I put the top on. Don't mind those two little blemishes. I had to do a little bit of wood filling. Um, probably did a pretty sloppy job but I'm going to sand those down in a second. Again here I used some clamps to make sure that everything was perfectly square before I screwed in 
the top to the bottom piece and those clamps just really help give you that second hand that you need. I also did pocket hole screws on the inside and then gave the whole piece a really good sanding down because I wanted this thing nice and smooth and it was pretty much finished from Lowe's, but I gave it another sanding anyway. These are the French cleats that I cut to hang this directly on the wall. Once I had that done, I did a little bit of trim work on the front with the front doors just to make everything look flush with these front hinging doors. I designed it so these doors would actually hinge forward. I drilled out a hole in the back top of the cabinet for cabling for the sound bar to be all connected to the inside. I also gave this a good stain after using a preconditioner on the wood. I gave it a good stain and sealer. Now, note to self, I dislike using stain and sealer combos. I don't know why. I didn't remember that from one other time I used it, but wow, I do not like it. I did the best I could. Fortunately, I was going for kind of a rustic look. We have kind of a ranch style house. So I think I succeeded in doing a nice rustic look, but I do not like working with stain and sealer. Remind me guys, don't use stain and sealer combination together. Do them separately. Here I am putting these really cool hinges on the front. This allows it to sit flush when it is closed and kind of snaps it in place so you don't need any other anchoring mechanisms. Here I'm putting the other half of the French cleats securely two studs on the walls. I was careful to measure this to give myself a little bit of wiggle room on either side to secure the cabinet to the wall. I made sure I knew where the studs were so they were just nice and solid. Always vacuum your debris from construction guys. Anyway, I mounted it to the wall here, just gave it a nice little uh, fit, made sure that it was properly level on left and right and front ways, and then secured it with some cabinet screws directly into the studs of the wall to make sure it wasn't going anywhere. Then I put that sound bar, that's a Samsung sound bar that I already had that I put there on the top, kind of matched the shape of the cabinet itself. And I'm liking where this is going. Now all I needed was the Nexigo automatic sliding tray for the ultra short throw projector. And this is it here. This thing is heavy. It's actually 25 pounds. So good thing I made that cabinet super strong and sturdy. I took a bunch of measurements to make sure that the projector was gonna sit at the proper height from the screen when it was on this sliding tray and I did need to raise it about an inch and a half so I just used some scrap wood here painted it black and set it up on top of there and this also gave me a way to anchor the sliding tray to the cabinet because you don't want that thing falling forward with the weight of the projector while I had it back out in the garage here I decided to use some inexpensive wise LED lighting strips on the bottom here that would give it nice underglow to really emphasize that floating effect of the cabinet hanging off the wall and these worked out really well. They were inexpensive directly from Lowe's and I like them, they're gonna do the job. Lauren helped me bring it back in cause it was definitely a little bit heavier and more awkward with that sliding tray pre-installed in there. But once I got it back into the bedroom, we just lifted it right up onto those French cleats and that made it super easy to re-secure this to the wall. I highly recommend using French cleats when you're mounting furniture to the wall the LED lights plugged in. I definitely like that effect there. I also got all the other cabling run through the cabinet in the back with a hole that I put back there for it specifically. Got the projector connected up to the sliding tray via USB port, which just lets the tray know to come out when the projector gets turned on and then slide back when the projector is turned off. So that was seamless and a very easy install. I then recalibrated everything and made sure it was very, very precise. And voila, we were in business. Man, I am really loving how this thing is all coming together. It's always a good feeling when you have an idea in your head and it comes to fruition. Thanks to the help of Hisense with their PL1 Ultra Short Throw Projector. I just love how this looks. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Is this something you would put in your master bedroom? Hisense PL1 Laser TV was the perfect fit for this whole setup. And I'm really quite impressed with the picture. Evie loves it too, but the one complaint she has is the dim effect when you have that Dolby Vision on. But look at this cool effect that you get when that tray slides out. It's almost like the screen expands to fit the 100 inch TV that we now have in our master bedroom. There's a look at that LED lighting under the cabinet. I'm really loving it. My wife loves it. We're definitely happy with the choice to put this PL1 
ultra short throw laser TV in our master bedroom. It's great for watching games, great for watching movies. And I love the fact that it just all goes away and is not seen when not in use. It really is a very cool TV at 100 inches hanging on our master bedroom wall now. And here's one more look at the distance from the TV to where we sit in our bed watching TV. And I don't know, what do you think? Should I go bigger? 